Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to go over how to install the Sonoff to Smoda firmware onto your Sonoff 4 Channel Pro. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open your browser, in my case I'm using Safari, and go to atom.io. If you've flashed any previous Sonoffs, you're definitely familiar with this. This is a program that allows us to flash the firmware onto our Sonoffs. So in my case, I already have it installed, but you can just download it. The next thing you want to do is download the Sonoff to Smoda firmware code. So you want to go to github.com slash A-R-E-N-D-S-T slash Sonoff dash Tusmoda and click enter. Once the website loads, you'll be presented with the GitHub. Select the releases button. So in my case, when I made this video, there's 66 releases. Scroll down, make sure you have are under the latest release and select the source code zip file. And that'll take a few seconds to download. It's about a megabyte and unzip it if you need to. But in my case, the Mac does it automatically. Open it and once you've installed the Atom file, you'll see the platform io.ini file automatically recognized by Atom. Make sure you open it with Atom. So there you can see my Atom has opened. So let me just close this quickly. And now I'm presented with Atom. And so you can disable the with welcome screen and the telemetry consent. But now you're presented with the Atom interface. Go into Preferences, Install. And now you want to type in Platform IO as one word, dash IDE. And the first package you see, the one with about 500,000 downloads, you want to click Install. Make sure you don't select the terminal one. And this is going to take about 5 to 10 minutes to install, so I'm going to quickly skip through that. You're going to be presented with a few um, windows. Uh, most of it should be automatic, but on Windows there's something about Clang. You can skip the Clang installation. So once it's done, it'll ask you to restart Atom. So just click on the green button and it'll restart. takes a few moments as it initializes the platform IO ID, but there you can see it's back. And in a few seconds, you'll see the platform IO ID splash page. So I'm just going to close out of the settings and uh, you're going to see now the platform IO.ini file. Oh, there's the platform IO ID. Just disable the show at startup and close it. You don't really need it. Now you can see that the platform IO.ini file has color. Previously, it was just gray text. So now we're going to actually configure the parameters in our platform IO uh, file. So you want to remove the comma from line 14 where it's the env underscore default equals sonoff. That's going to make sure it builds the proper file. So you want to scroll down where to where it says upload speed and from 115200 change that to 57600. And that's about it for this file for now. So you can use the save under file underscore file and save. Next thing you want to do is go into the Sonoff folder. Scroll down to where you have your user underscore config.h, not the user underscore config override one, just the user underscore config.h. Click it so it opens the file. And now this is where we'll be configuring the parameters. So the first thing you want to change is the CFG holder. So it'll have some random number. You don't actually have to change this, but in my case, I'm changing it. Make sure it's between 1,000 and 9,999. It should be a four-digit number above 1,000. So in my case, I did 0816, but that's wrong. It'll actually not work on your Sonoff. So make sure it's between 1,000 and 9,999. Next, for projects, change it to Sonoff. That'll be your topic. So Sonoff 4 Channel Pro is what I said it. And then underscore where you have your module. Set that to Sonoff 4 chpro as one word as I'm showing it on screen. Make sure it is just like that or else the Taos Moda firmware will not work. Down in line 62, you have your st underscore ssid. Between the quotes, put your Wi-Fi network name. And then in the next 
line, enter your Wi-Fi password. So in my case, I'm just setting it to Wi-Fi network name, Wi-Fi password, and you can see it works. Where it says Wi-Fi config tool, change that to Wi-Fi underscore manager. Make sure it's all caps. And that's pretty much all the user configuration we need. The rest of it can be done once we install the firmware. Save the file by going under file and then save. And that's pretty much it for the firmware configuration. So now we're going to actually wire up our FTDI and Sonoff to it and start the firmware upload process. So now here's the wiring diagram. On the left side, we have the FTDI. Make sure it's set to the 3.3 volt mode or else you're going to brick your Sonoff 4 Channel Pro. And then on the right side, we have the actual board. So there's three headers for GPIO pins on the Sonoff 4 Channel Pro. The one we're going to focus is on the leftmost side near the name of the board. You're going to see four pins labeled the 3.3 volt, RX, TX, and ground. Those are the pins connected to the ESP module, which we flash the firmware onto. So make sure you have pins soldered to that so you can connect that to your FTDI. And then on the right side, there's another two headers. For these headers, just make sure you have the ground pin available to use. We just need it to bring the GPIO zero to ground. That's what allows the Sonoff to go into the uh, firmware upload mode. On the Sonoff basic, we do this by holding the button, but since none of the buttons are connected to this GPIO pin on the Sonoff 4 Channel Pro, we're going to use a female to male GPIO connector cable and connect the ground to GPIO zero. And then for the FT, on the FTDI side, you're going to connect the 3.3 volt to the VCC, TX to the RX, RX to the TX, and both grounds. And when you're connecting the FTDI to your computer, make sure at all costs that the ground and GPIO zero cables are fully connected, or else the Sonoff will not enter the firmware upload mode and your upload's going to fail. So that's pretty much it for this wiring. Okay, so once you've wired up and connected your FTDI, make sure in the platformio.ini file, scroll down to where it says upload port, and now click on the platform IO menu and select list serial ports. This is going to list the available serial ports. So in most people's case, if they're on a Mac, they're going to see a slash dev slash something. So in my case, it's a WCHU, that's the USB serial device. So you just want to copy that. In Windows, it'll be a COM and a number. So once you've copied that, replace the COM5 in line 71 with the device that you found in the list serial monitor. Save your platformio.ini file using Command S, Control S, or the file save. And now go into the Platform IO menu and click Upload. This is going to build the firmware. And you can see that it starts installing all the dependencies and starts compiling the code. Once it's done compiling the code, you're going to see an upload process begin and you're going to start seeing percentage. This can take about one to five minutes depending on your computer. And once it's done, you're going to see a 100% in the success message. And that means it's done flashing the firmware. What we're going to need to do now is disconnect the GPIO zero and ground so the Sonoff can now boot normally. And then we're going to get the IP address. Once you've disconnected GPIO zero from ground and connected the serial device back in, select serial monitor, select your port, uh, which should be the serial device you're using, and then select the baud rate to 115200 and click start. You're going to see some stuff coming in that's just the sound of sending us diagnostic messages. Type in IP address as one word. You won't see anything on the screen when you type it in, but you'll see a immediate response. So then I'm going to type it in again here, and there you can see IP address. And then on the right side, you have your IP address. So in my case, it's 10.0.1.15. Copy that. Mm. Open up a browser, in my, in my case Safari, and just put it in and click Enter and you're going to be presented with the Sonoff 4 Channel Pro web interface. So here I clicked already the button for toggle too, so it was on. So now you can mess around, turn on and off all your Sonoff devices, not your Sonoff relays on the 4 Channel Pro. Go into configuration, configure MQTT, and here you can set up your MQTT broker if you've already followed one of my previous videos. You can go in, change any of the other names. So in my case, 
I'm not really changing any other settings, but that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for following the video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. You can also reach me on the Facebook and Twitter pages that I'll have linked below as well. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.